I love so many little things. I love cinnamon in my coffee, especially if I didn't have to make it. <laughs> I love the transition of seasons, right when it gets cold. I love that my twin brother is a dad now, and how much he's obsessed with his tiny son. I love shiny things, obviously. <laughs> I'm a shameless backfire, a product of the 80s last era. I love the smell of horse sweat. Uh, <laughs> because it reminds me of, of the seven summers I spent teaching little kids how to ride horses. It was adorable, and it is my strongest sense of memory. I love gothic novels, flowery language, I love the brutality, those two things together. I like being tied up and slapped Ooh. by somebody I like for a while. Uh, as if I've done something really bad, because I haven't, and I probably won't. Not that interesting. I love the first pucker of open flesh, right when your skin turns red. A brief protestation against a bladed intruder. Self destruction, I fucking love it. You can't get enough. I pull up my vile and little yellow pills and I line them up on my kitchen sink, on my bathroom sink, on my nightstand, on my coffee table, and I count them and I run my fingers over the seams and I wonder what it must be like to just go to sleep. I'm not to worry about the stress of waking up. I don't do well in the heat. It is the week of my 27th birthday and it has been in the 90s for the last 10 days. In my pale Icelandic skin, blisters and reddens, no matter how much sunscreen I put on or how much I don't leave my house, which is not often. My sweat, which is perpetual, smells like whiskey and <laughs> cheap wine and expensive coffee. And I make Valley of the Dolls references as I pop yet another cloud of in. And my friends all laugh because they don't want to be called out for their coping mechanisms, and I'm afraid of my unfettered brain chemistry. So we all think it's funny how we fuck how fucked up we are. Yeah. <sighs> I call in sick to work three times this week. And I actually am sick. I'm practically an invalid, but I don't know how to tell my boss on the phone that like there's nothing physically wrong with me except that my legs are lead weights. And my sheets are soaking up my misery like a sponge. And it's like trying to stop a first pipe with a paper towel is really hopeless. And, and I just scream into my pillow and I cry. And I beat my fist against it and I cry and I cry again and I cry some more about nothing until I just don't have anything left. So on the phone, I just say I'm sick. Once, earlier in the summer, I tried to go off the thought of it. Not for any noble reason, not for like some holistic, valid-proved method of <laughs> <laughs> But because I want to drink more. <laughs>
knowing I can do something fucking incredible with this text. I love secrets in the dark. The rustle of sheets, the like delicious forbidden intimacy of a gently bitten lip grazing whispers against my ear. Val and Casey and Emily plan my birthday parties for me because I don't have the energy to do it myself. Uh, but it's great, it's perfect. We start at Tweet for brunch, uh, which is a place where they understand that vegetarians and vegans also appreciate carbs and alcohol. <laughs> 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 and we get deliciously, dizzily drunk on uh, extremely strong mimosas. And we walk up and down the strip in Andersonville and we pop into shops and all the like, weird, cute places where rich people buy things. And we try weird outfits and we collapse in fits of laughter on the couch of Akira and we buy matching black onesies that none of us will ever wear again. <laughs> we go to holiday club at night. Hey. <laughs> and we dance to the soul affirming tunes of the 90s while dozens of people show up and hug me and tell me happy birthday. And it's like an out-of-body experience because I'm watching this and I'm hugging people and I'm saying thank you and I'm getting glitter on their faces. And I think if this massive amount of love isn't enough to make me stay, nothing is. It's the night before my birthday. I light up all my little yellow pills and a really perfect row it was beautiful. Will time be enough? 15? 20? Maybe I should wait till after midnight so I can join the 27 Club. Well, that's funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> so I but it's an ugly sound, and so I drown it out with an Amy Winehouse record, which I immediately turn off. <laughs> Socks and robe, and on my breakfast tray is a little printed 
note that says happy birthday slipped under my fruit cup. <laughs> they gave me a plastic fork, but no knife. <laughs> I look around the room. There's a young guy down the way. His neck is held together by staples, like something out of beef juice, and it's so terrible that I can't stop looking, but he's just casually eating a whole unbuttered bagel. No knives for him either, I guess. There's a woman at the table across from me. She's older, she's disheveled, her hair is in every direction. She's arguing vehemently with herself or someone I can't see, trying to take her robe off. The orderly, orderly politely instructs her not to expose herself at breakfast. Thank you, Donna. <laughs> and God, suddenly I'm, I'm really ashamed because my attempt now it's like a mockery of their very real suffering. And I have five involuntary days to consider that fact alone. Yeah, we get phone calls between 7 to 9. They have to be pre-approved. You can have visitors once a day between 5 and 6, but no more than two at a time. Emily visited me, and they liked her so much, they asked her when, they asked me when she was coming back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really grateful. 